This is Tim with Van Leeuwen Family Farm. This is not one of my typical videos, but winter's coming on, it's getting cold, and I need to get this old diesel serviced uh, before winter. We need to get it uh, ready to go before the cold comes on because the worst time to uh, be trying to work on a diesel truck is when it's already cold. And uh, for a lot of people last year, the temperatures got to you know, 15 to 20 below. Here it got to 20 below, and uh, everybody's trucks was gelling up. Uh, I mean, even if you ran the anti-gel in your trucks, uh, you know, if your truck was sitting outside, good luck getting it started or getting it to run long enough to use. So uh, we're gonna get everything ready to go on this truck for winter. So hopefully we don't have any problems. Uh, yesterday I changed the oil, I didn't video that. Uh, but I'm going to show you some of the stuff I'm going to do today. Uh, I've got some uh, silicone boots that need to go on the... Uh, that need to go on this pipe right here. Uh, our old boots. I don't know if you can see them. The old boots right there and... That one especially are getting really bad. Uh, they're just, they're spongy. Can't really get a good shot on. They're just spongy, it's leaking oil. Uh, you know, it's, it's probably leaking boost pressure. And so that's something that definitely needs addressed. Yesterday, uh, I changed the oil, so I'll give you a quick rundown of everything that I did. This is where the factory oil filter goes. Now I got grease on my fingers. This is where the factory oil filter goes. Uh, I put a bypass oil filtration system on this truck. Um, so the factory oil filter, it's a canister type filter. It is still in there, uh, but some of that oil 10% of the oil comes out of this line right here and it actually runs to this bypass filter right here this is an AMS oil bypass filter uh, it's got an extra one and a half quarts of oil capacity uh, so not only does it filter your oil down to two microns which is an extremely efficient filter uh, but it adds an extra one and a half quarts to your oil capacity. The oil capacity in this truck is normally 15 quarts, but I can get 16 and a half quarts with this oil filter in there. And now I said that this oil filter can filter down to two microns. Your factory filter that's inside this housing right here only filters down to 20 microns. So you got 20 microns versus two microns so this is going to filter out anything uh that that one can't filter out and so i'll give you a quick uh theory behind this so most of the oil is still going to be filtered through this filter uh 10 percent filters through this bypass this hose and this bypass filter over over here but as the truck can, runs continuously, eventually the 10% of the oil that filters through here will all be, eventually all of the oil at one time or another will filter through this other bypass filter. So even though it only filters 10% at a time, say within an hour's time or probably less, eventually all of that oil will have will have passed through this line and that bypass filter so all the oil will eventually filter through this although the majority of the oil filters through that factory filter i want to show you some other things that i've done uh, this is a 6.0 diesel uh, a ford power stroke and you know they're notorious for all the common problems that everybody has horror stories about um, when I first got the truck, it, it ran perfectly fine. 
after about a year of having it uh, I put a monitor uh, monitor inside the cab uh, that shows me all of the sensors and uh, everything that goes through the computer on this truck and this deal right back here is called the Fickum. That's the fuel injection control module. Uh, they are bad about going out. Uh, if you had to buy one of those brand new, they're about seven to eight hundred dollars. There is a circuit board in there called the power supply circuit board that you can purchase for a hundred and twenty-five dollars um, off of like summitracing.com or some of those other sites. And the power supply board is uh, the main issue. 90% of the time, if your FICM is starting to go out, it's the power supply board. And instead of buying an $800 whole FICM unit, you can take that apart, put the power supply board in there for 125 bucks and you're gonna be good. Uh, kinda to remedy that, uh, one of the main reasons reasons those FICMs go out is because of a low low battery charge. And so this is an aftermarket alternator. It's made by Presto Light Nice Lease Neville. It's a 250 uh, actually it's a 230 amp alternator. Um I've got an underdrive pulley on it, uh, which the place I bought it from recommended the underdrive pulley, and I'll get to that in a second. Um, but anyways, uh, you know, this is gonna keep your batteries charged up. When your batteries go start to go bad and, and don't stay charged up, that's really hard on the FICM because the FICM is what supplies power to the injectors. And so this is all kind of a cycle. It starts with maybe a weak alternator. Then your batteries start getting weak and start going bad. That makes the FICM have to work harder to supply power to the injectors. When the FICM is not working properly, uh, then it, it struggles to get power to the injectors, which is in turn bad on your injectors. And so that can cause problems for your injectors. Your injectors can get damaged or go out because they don't have the proper power supply. And so it kind of starts with putting a good alternator on there. This is an industrial alterna alternator. Uh, they put these on a lot of school buses, uh, industrial vehicles that came out with this 6.0 engine. Uh, make sure your batteries are charged up. Another thing that I did is the factory battery cables on this power stroke are not the best. Uh, so with, along with the alternator, I bought a heavy duty battery cable kit, which flows way more current to the, to the charging system from the alternator. Hooks to the alternator there. It's got a ground wire right here follows those wires those cables there you got to put a, a 250 amp fuse in here just in case the alternators uh, for some reason starts overcharging uh, and it'll it'll blow that fuse there before it does any damage to the batteries but those cables also run along to this side of the truck to that battery and then there's also a cable uh, you can't really can't really see it there's also a cable that runs down down in here to the frame and you got to take this air box out to uh, be able to see that yeah you can't really see it from here but there is there's another cable that runs to the frame down there actually it runs to the engine block there's a bolt on the engine block that it runs to um, but anyways, those are kind of some of the things that I've done to this truck already in the past. Another thing that I've done, uh, this kit comes together. This is your bypass oil filter. This is your bypass coolant filter. 
something these 6.0s were bad about was um, having some debris and casting sand and the engine block. And these coolant filters are supposed to catch all that because that debris will get caught up in the oil cooler that is inside the engine and it'll clog up that oil cooler. And when that happens, uh, it starves the EGR cooler for coolant. Uh, the coolant gets superheated and it ruptures the EGR cooler. And that's when it starts leaking antifreeze into your intake manifold and into the engine. And that's when you'll blow a head gasket. So there's a lot of things that, you know, if you want to keep your 6.0 healthy, uh, and I know a lot of us farmers have them. Uh, the guys that have them and that have taken good care of them really like them. Uh, the people that have had them and have abused them. Or maybe they bought somebody else's truck that's been abused. And the truck just starts having problems from the get-go. They all cuss them and say they're a piece of junk and the worst engine ever made. But, uh, you know, you just gotta, you gotta do your research about these engines got to know what the common problems are if you address those you're probably not going to have any problems out of them I'm trying to think what else i've done um down in here there's an oil filter housing right here there's a little cover right here uh inside that cover is a fuel pressure spring that uh you know controls how much fuel pressure is going into the engine and the spring that ford put in there is uh, a little weak or i don't know for sure what the issue is with it i can't remember it because it's been about five years since i've done it but uh, they sell a, a spring kit called a blue spring kit and Ford sells that. Um, I don't know if they're still producing it or if you'll have to go to an aftermarket site to get it now. Um, but Ford sells that to correct the fuel pressure issue because a lot of the fuel, a lot of times the fuel pressure will be down there around 40 PSI, I think. And it's supposed to be like around 65 PSI. And so that's gonna that's gonna make your truck run better. It's gonna uh, help out those injectors. It's gonna make your injectors live longer. Uh, it's gonna make the truck run smoother. And that's more of a it's more of a fuel injector saving issue than anything. Because um, I didn't really notice a big difference on the way the truck runs. Some people say that it does make a difference. Uh, I just did it because I wanted to save my injectors because they're expensive. So, uh, that's pretty much it for now, you know, other than general maintenance. I did replace that overflow, uh, degas, uh, tank right there. Because those, those are bad about, uh, going bad too. And so, for now, I changed the oil yesterday. Um, I'm going to change these boots today, and then I'm also going to change these fuel filters. It's a little cold out here today. It's probably only about 50 degrees right now, um, but we're going to get it done because it. this is going to be one of the warmer days, and then it's going to start getting cold from here on out as far as I can tell. The oil that I used... Here, find a good place to put this. The oil that I used on this truck is uh, this Schaefer's OTR Plus full synthetic diesel, diesel engine oil. Um, there's been several, several tests done on this oil. It's got a high shear strength, which is something you, you usually talk about in metals. Um, but this truck has a high pressure oil, uh, pump on it and that oil pump gets to pressures of 6,000 PSI and 
if you just use an oil that is not formulated to withstand that it's going to break that oil down severely and that oil is not going to last long and uh, it's just not going to hold up this oil is basically made for semi trucks uh otr i'm pretty sure stands for over the road plus you know over the road trucks uh industrial industrial trucks it's some heavy duty stuff and schaefer's is it's you know it's, uh really top quality oil probably probably some of the best oil you can buy and really compared to the other diesel oils it's not really that much more expensive um but you know especially for the 6.0 I, I highly recommend this oil uh you're not going to be disappointed in it all right guys let's get to it i'm going to start out by replacing those boots because i really want to get that done it's been something i've been meaning to get done for a long time i think i've had these boots for a year and i still haven't got them replaced uh you know life on the farm is busy so we're gonna get it done now though and then i'm gonna change those fuel filters and really that's the last thing i need to do for now um you know i'm, I'm gonna check the antifreeze make sure that's good and uh everything else should be ready to go for the winter on this truck Hey guys, I'm gonna show you these boots real quick. At first observation, if you just look at the top side of the boot, they look like they're fine. But obviously they were leaking oil and I'm gonna show you uh, what the underside of the boot looks like. Um, these boots are under a, a whole lot of pressure, you know, and they cycle on and off all the time because you're constantly getting in the gas, getting off the gas, and every time you get on the gas, uh, the turbo boosts up and it, it puts pressure to those boots so the continuous cycle of it you know expanding and contracting uh, you know over time causes cracks in the boot so I'm going to show you uh, one spot that I found on the boot that connects to the turbo so if you look at the top side of the boot you can't really see anything if you look at the inside of the boot I mean, it looks like it's all intact. But then when you look at the underside of the boot, see that crack? That boot is starting to split on the un underside of the boot on this bend. kind of hard to show you with just one hand but you can see uh the boots just getting worn out from being in use for so long and this is a factory ford boot right there so that's been on the truck for you know unless it was replaced at one time which i doubt it's been on the truck for uh 15 years now because this truck is a 2006 this is october 2021 so late october at that but Anyways, we're gonna get these replaced. The new boots that we have are these boots from side by side going by on the road. These boots from Sinister Diesel, and they do have a lot of diesel products and they do make a lot of stuff for this 6.0. And so you'll see four boots in there. Two of these boots are for the cold side pipe which goes from the intercooler to your intake manifold 
which I won't actually be using those because the factory tube cold side pipe does not use boots uh, if I had an aftermarket pipe they would use these boots um, so that might be something I do in the future but for now uh, the boots I'm going to be using are one of these boots and this boot with the angle on it that boot was the one that had the cracks in it this boot here goes from the cold side pipe to the intake manifold we're not going to use it this boot here goes from uh it also goes to the cold side pipe we're not going to use it these are our two hot side intercooler pipe boots so those are the ones we're going to be putting on I think it'll help out if you go ahead and put this lower tube, this lower boot on along with the clamp and then you can fish it in there and just uh, push it onto the inner cooler. guys I got all the boots on uh, it was a little bit more difficult than it looks um, the boots are really sticky for, you know for a lack of better terms so when you put the clamp on there and you want to try to adjust the clamp um, if the clamp is too tight at all uh, even if it feels loose it's hard to get the clamp to turn and so you almost have to have the clamp on exactly where you want it and hold it in place with one hand and run it down with the other hand and i had to do a lot of stopping and trying to adjust the clamp or maybe the clamp didn't quite line up how i wanted it um after i got it tightened down so i'd have to go back and redo it sorry guys i got my glasses on today and so anyways uh yeah, it was just a lot of trial and error fitting those boots back on there. And uh, I know a lot of guys will just run these clamps down with an air ratchet. But uh, if you know me, that's that's not my style. Uh, if you really want things done right, you need to run them down by hand. For one, you don't really have a lot of room on these boots uh, to get the clamps lined up. Um, you know, to where the clamp fits on the part that you're trying to secure it to uh you know the what the boot slips down on there's not a lot of space on some of those areas to get the clamp installed and the factory clamps the clamps are really close to the edge of the boot and i tried to duplicate that um, but sometimes when you're running it down the clamp would cock or whatever and uh, it's just kind of hard to get it lined up and you also don't want to over tighten these um on the especially on the plastic uh, intercooler fitting uh, inlet because it is just plastic 
I mean, once you get these boots down pretty snug, they're gonna have a pretty good seal on like the metal tubes and the uh, the turbo. I did tighten them down quite a bit more, but I I didn't uh, crank on them. I kind of just snugged them down until I felt they were tight. So I'll give you a look at what it looks like now. I got a bunch of gloves and whatnot up here. Uh, I always try to wear gloves. It just saves your hands from getting grease all over them and you know trying to handle stuff and and film also i mean there's no point in getting your hands all greasy and everything so i'll show you these boots so there's the new boot installed right there on the lower inlet to the intercooler and the pipe they are pretty good looking boots uh, you can just, you know, when I was handling them and comparing them to, them to the old boots, they are uh, way thicker, way, uh, a way heavier boot than factory. So, I mean, pretty much, I think if you replaced your boots with these, you'd never have to replace them again. Uh, kind of a pain with these filters being in the way. I couldn't get a ratchet on couldn't get a ratchet on this one right here so i had to use a ratchet wrench on that i could get a ratchet on that one but you can see there's not a whole lot of room on some of this stuff camera's not focusing real well but between this pipe this pipe here and the clamp there's not a whole lot of room This boot here was kind of a real pain because there's not a lot of room uh, where it connects to this turbo and the flange on that turbo inlet is not real, it's not real wide. So you don't have a whole lot of space on the turbo inlet on this side so it's you can see where i'm pushing in that clamp is pretty close to the edge there and it's pretty close to the edge of the boot on this side so you gotta this is what took me the most time you gotta get that just right to fit on the fan the flange of the turbo inlet and have your clamp position properly you can see there's not a whole lot of space between this coolant hose and that clamp either they're not rubbing it's hard to tell on this but uh, it shouldn't ever rub i can't see that hose coming down there and rubbing on it for any reason this clamp was probably the easiest to install. It's the most out in the open. And really that flange is a little bit bigger on this tube here. And so, yeah, I just, you know, got it lined up and ran it down. But that's what they look like. I'm pretty happy to get these boots back on here. I'm trying to climb, climb off the truck. And these things should be good to go for a long time. One issue with this setup here is that it's real close to that bracket right there. This is not a factory setup. The, the factory setup does not have this bracket. This bracket is to hold these filters. And this is an oversized alternator. The factory alternator is a lot smaller than this. And one one problem with this alternator is that a lot of people like to put a bigger pipe on here than just this factory pipe. Uh, but some of those aftermarket bigger pipes says that they are not made to fit an oversized alternator. So I don't know you know, if I ever did put a bigger pipe on this, if it's going to interfere with that alternator right there, 
or and or the bracket and or this filter but to tell you the truth i'm not really in the diesel power business i'm in the farming business so everything i do to my truck is just to make the truck last longer uh, for what it's intended for it's intended for pulling cattle uh hauling farm supplies you know just everything like that you know i'm not trying to make you know 600 horsepower out of my diesel uh like some of these other guys and that is a big business but it's not it's not what i'm into uh diesel trucks are expensive uh especially in today's age uh they're they're uh you know a truck like this this is an f-350 dually full drive a brand new truck like this is gonna run you about 75 80 grand you know so i mean if i can make this truck last as long as possible uh that's what i'm gonna do i mean i'm not in the business dang mosquito i'm <laughs> i'm not looking to spend uh you know even fifty thousand on a truck that's that's not logical uh when you're trying to run a farm uh of our size you know maybe if you had you know uh ten thousand acre operation and you know it was a big you know operation that you have employees and all that type of stuff you know uh but just for me i'm not spending that kind of money on a truck So I got to keep this truck running as good as I can for as long as I can. And so I'm not going to put any parts on my truck just because I think they look cool or it's going to make more power because that's what all that's what all the young kids are doing nowadays. These diesel trucks are are today's hot rods to these young kids. Uh, but I just find it funny when those trucks blow up or something happened to them uh, because they weren't meant to be driven like that or modified like that I do want to show you guys that cold side pipe uh, that I was talking about this elbow right here goes to the intake manifold this pipe right here connects the intake manifold elbow can't really see it because it's underneath uh, this this air cleaner here but that pipe goes down and connects to the intercooler on this side and two of those boots in that kit are for this cold side but really for a factory setup like this is you're not going to be able to use those boots because uh, it doesn't take boots so if you have aftermarket pipes uh, that's what you would use those boots for uh, an aftermarket pipe is going to be aluminum and it's not going to just slip over this elbow like this it's actually going to stop and then there will be a boot right here and down there there will be a boot like there was on that side so that's the reason why we're not putting those boots on because it actually doesn't need them when i ordered these boots i i actually wanted to order both uh <clears throat> i actually wanted to order these pipes these aftermarket pipes but they were uh you know really not necessary for me at the time and you know without really going out and looking at the truck I didn't really realize that this side didn't need those boots on them so if you wanted to you could just order uh, the boots for that hot side pipe if you wanted to leave this factory but like I said this this truck is besides the little things that I've done it's had no performance modifications on it you know to give it more power or anything like that uh, if I don't if I don't go to an aftermarket pipe on that on this side uh, I will have no use for those boots so those boots are a little bit expensive they're basically uh, you know about $200 for for 
the boots on that side and the boots on this side so by not using the boots for this side i'm basically wasting a hundred bucks which i didn't really realize that until i had already bought them but now that i got them you know uh sinister diesel does make some really nice pipes uh turbo pipes intercooler pipes i guess they're called so in the future i may go ahead and switch these out i may go ahead and switch this one out switch that one out as well uh for those aftermarket pipes and i think i could probably get that that pipe over there to fit you know if i had to wrap that pipe with something to keep it from rubbing on the back of that alternator uh, i would um but that's something i may do in the future but it wasn't really necessary right now and i'll just hang on to those boots and until i do that so i just wanted to kind of show you guys that and that's the reason why there's an extra two boots in there that i didn't use today so we're gonna move on i'm gonna go ahead and change the fuel filter that's in this housing right here um i'm also gonna change the fuel filter that is in the frame rail which is right here I'm not gonna film this because uh, it's gonna be hard to get my camera in here and do all this and film but i'm just gonna show you where it's at uh, i've got a, a socket uh, that i bought just for this but this is kind of a tight fit in here but what you're gonna do is you're gonna undo that cap right there all you gotta do is pull the old filter out let the fuel drain out uh, get all that old fuel out of there. It's probably got to have some water in it. It's got a... Uh, this filter is called like a fuel water separator. But it's also a fuel filter at the same time. So what it does is it separates the water out of the fuel. And it traps it so that the water doesn't go up to the engine. That's kind of a shot of all of it there. There is a cross member right here. It is kind of a tight fit. But that's going to get changed today too. It's probably a good idea to change this. Uh, I'm not for sure what the service manual says when you should change it. But, you know, I would just say every six months, you know, uh, just to keep everything fresh. These diesels can get kind of finicky. They don't like water in the fuel. Uh, they can gel up during the winter time. It's just best to stay on top of this maintenance before winter. And uh, so you're not stranded on the side of the road somewhere. Especially when you got things to do. When you got chores to do. And them cattle are dependent on you. Or whatever the case may be. You don't want to be stuck on the side of the road. Hey guys, I'm going to show you what comes in this filter kit from Ford. It's very important that you use the filters from Ford because they've designed these filters to be specifically used with this engine. And, you know, is all manufacturers specifically used for, specifically designed for those vehicles. Uh, aftermarket filter companies, they have to change something about their filter, either the dimensions or some other little thing to avoid you know pat patent issues uh and so a filter that's not these trucks go by all the time a filter that's not designed exactly like what was meant to be used in the engine is not going to perform like it's supposed to so this is the filter 
Uh, that writing may be backwards, but I'm gonna I'm gonna uh, post all of the items and products in the description below with links to where you can find everything. Uh, you know, if you guys need to purchase any of these products uh, to use on your power stroke. So this little filter here, this is a filter that goes on the top of the engine. That's what goes in that housing right there. This filter here is the fuel water separator filter. And it's the one that's going to go inside the frame rail. And in this packaging, uh, it comes with an O-ring and some instructions uh, on how to replace that. So I'm going to go ahead and show you guys this little one that goes on top of the engine. And that's going to be about it for today. One other thing that I need to address though is the engine oil dipstick. The plastic around the dipstick handle cracked and uh, I called Ford. They actually discontinued that dipstick. So I'm just going to end up going to O'Reilly's. I already called them. They have a doorman dipstick which is not my number one choice. Uh, but I don't really have time to wait on it. I don't want to drive the truck with this broken dipstick. Um, the plastic's broken, so stuff could enter the engine if it wanted to. Uh, so I'm just going to go to O'Reilly's and pick that dipstick up. I'll kind of show you what happened to it. That dipstick cracked uh, the plastic housing there. And I didn't know anything about it because it's been a while since I even popped the hood on this truck. Because I've been, you know, preparing to change the oil and stuff on it. And that's something that I would have never thought uh, would have happened. The last time that I checked this oil, uh, the dipstick was fine. Um, There's nothing wrong with it. And so I guess it's just one of them things. Plastic gets brittle after 15 years, so... I've got another one uh, ready for me to pick up at O'Reilly's and I'm going to go pick that up as soon as I get all this done. So we're going to go ahead and take the cap off of this. All you need is a half inch drive ratchet. Uh, you could put a socket on that as well, but this will work just fine. I can hear some air bleeding out of this. The filter is going to be connected. We want to try to dump out that old fuel. Try to limit as much spillage as we can. A lot of people don't know that diesel fuel is. Whoop. A lot of people don't know that diesel fuel is very corrosive. I spilled more than I intended intended to. But yeah, diesel will eat plastic, eat rubber. That's why, uh, you know, they had to make all these fuel lines and everything for diesels, you know, specific to diesel fuel. 
and a lot of times at the gas pump you'll see them diesel fuel uh pumps they'll be you know the the dispenser nozzle will be leaking because that diesel is ate away a rubber seal or something So you really don't want to spill it on any plastic or rubber parts if you can help it. You want to put the side with the hole in it down. This side goes into the cap. about 20 times a day it's probably the most heavily trafficked railroad that comes through this little town that I've ever seen but anyhow that's what you're hearing in the background be a little bit easier to do this if I had an extension but I can't find one today Hey guys, don't forget to put a new o-ring on this cap. Like I just did. All right. Once you to lubricate that o-ring a little bit with some diesel fuel or motor oil. I got diesel fuel handy right here. All right. Let's stick it back on. That O-ring goes in this groove right here, right underneath the, the top of the cap. And that's all there is to that filter. That was pretty easy. Underneath the truck is a different story because it's dirty. It's a little bit tighter space. and uh, But it's doable. It's not that big a deal. A lot of people when they first get a 6.0, they think that this filter is the only filter you're supposed to change. And probably the filter underneath the truck and the frame rail is actually the most important filter to change because it's also a water fuel separator.
that kind of filters the fuel before it even gets to this filter. All right, guys, I've got everything done that I set out to do today. I got the boots changed on that uh, hot side intercooler pipe between the intercooler and the turbo. I got my fuel filters changed. I changed the oil yesterday. And so now all we got left to do is start the truck up. After you change your fuel filters on these 6.0s, you want to cycle the key. I've heard some people say cycle it two times for 30 seconds, cycle it three times for 30 seconds. Somewhere I heard uh, when I very first got this truck, and I don't remember where I found it, to cycle the key six times for 30 seconds a piece to prime the fuel pumps. And so that's what I'm going to do, because if you try to start this thing, uh, without priming your fuel pumps, it's going to be bad on your injectors. So I'll show you guys this process. Alright guys, everything's looking good, got the truck running, it fired right up after I changed those fuel filters, everything's done, and uh, this truck's ready for winter. So, I hope you guys enjoyed watching this, uh, this isn't one of my typical videos, it's not really farm related, but this truck is our farm truck, and our everyday work truck. So it had to be done. So I'll see you guys next time. This is Tim with Van Loon Family Farm.